Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing OD57 in the 3-minute pool in ICC. We are going to play a con if allowed. He does allow it. Bishop d3. Let's play bishop c5 against that. Try to make them withdraw the knight to b3. I like this system. I enjoy playing it for black. Let's play d6 now. And we'll play knight d7 just to forestall any chance that he wants to play e5 if we develop the knight through f6. Okay, he actually plays queen g4. So if knight f6, I'd have to gambit the pawn, so I will not do that. I'll play g6 instead. But uh, I don't think I'm really bothered by his early queen sortie, because typically white does this when bishop h6 is still possible. They want to be able to pop the bishop over to that square to stop me from castling. So this is an unusual treatment of the position. Yeah, I wonder, hmm. Okay, I'm just going to take and then play e5 after he recaptures. I like this because now I can push my b-pawn, put the bishop on b7, and hopefully get rook g8 going. Should I play b6 or b5? Uh, I think it's it's a close call. b5 is more active, though. There's a chance that he could use this pawn as a hook to attack, like maybe play a4 and then try to get me to play b4. But more likely, I'm just going to be able to do this and, um, yeah, just attack him down the g-file. Rook g8 coming. It's pretty serious once it gets going. And what's stopping me from just playing rook g8 right now? This is a big deal. I feel like he's not properly assessing the position right now. So, I mean, if he takes on f6, I take on g2. That wins material. If h4, I can play h6, or just b4 first if I want. This is really bad for him. Knight e4 doesn't help. I can just, well, knight e4 maybe. Knight takes e4, bishop takes e7. Mm, even there I have like knight c3 if I want. Rook takes g2 probably works, works there too. Yeah, he didn't think this over too well. I'm just going to check who OD57 is while I have a second. I am Dorel Ulteon. Okay, so he plays this move. If I take with the bishop, he can play bishop takes f6 in between, although I, I take on d3 then. Bishop takes, bishop takes... Yeah, I don't want to mess with that. I think just knight takes, as I was originally intending. Knight takes, bishop takes e7. Knight c3. It's pretty crushing. Let's do that. Hmm. He's gambiting his bishop. If one can gambit a bishop. Let's not overthink it. Ah, so that's his idea. So if I take, he's going to take on a8. I suppose that has merit. Okay, let's just do this. I'll let him take a6 if he wants. Actually, here I can just take e4. It's simpler, huh? Take e4, he takes b7, I take with my queen. Hmm. Yeah, let's just do that. He can trade on a8 and then uh, play rook a1, but I don't think it's going to amount to anything. Okay, so he's maybe just trying to win e4, I'm guessing. Queen a6. Queen d5. Let's just play here. So I'm hitting this knight twice. Yeah, if queen takes e4, I take on a5 with my rook. Hence knight c4. Hmm. Okay, let's take... And then we'll go queen b7. Just to guard this a8 square, also guards our pawn. Threatening rook takes f5. I gotta watch the d6 square. I mean, knight d6 would be devastating if not for my bishop. Maybe if I get a chance, I'll play king f8. Just as a way to consolidate. Yeah, like right now is a good, good time for this move. Our king's a bit safer on that square. It's nice to be out of range of his knight with check. He's going to try to blitz us out. That's about his only hope now. Ooh, I blundered that pawn, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, actually, this could be helpful, because now I get to play rook takes f5 next move. Knight c4, rook takes f5. Hmm. Guess I'll just go here. So he moves the knight, rook takes h4.
the time is the only thing that could make this one, uh, I don't know, turn on its head or something. It's not going to happen. I will win. And he's out of ideas. Okay, let's just grab here. Check. Let's give it a check. check. Knight g4 is going to be really tough. Time warning. Mm, take. takes the, He takes on d5. That wins for me. Okay, yeah. The conclusion could be rook takes d5, knight takes d5, check. Uh, king f1, rook h1, mate. So just to illustrate that, something check. like this. Check. mate. Okay, let's go back and have a look at that. So we had a con Sicilian. And I played bishop c5. That's one line I like against bishop d3. So bishop c5, knight b3, and then bishop back to e7. So if they're going to play queen g4, it's best to play it right here. That way, after g6, because he is attacking the pawn, he can retreat the queen back to e2. And now if ever this knight comes to f6, the pawn is not yet on f4, so they could play bishop h6 and disrupt my play a bit. But um, he played just castles and then d6. I'm getting ready for knight f6 so that e5 doesn't bother me. f4, knight d7, queen g4. Like, now I can just play g6. And I think it's better... Um, for me than, than the line I just showed, because now the bishop can't ever get to that h6 square. So, yeah, he plays king h1, I attack his queen with tempo, he retreats, queen c7, just to make sure that e5 doesn't hurt. And then f5 was, was very reckless, I don't think he can get away with that move. This transformation of the pawn structure, by the way, tends to favor black if there's uh, tangible pressure down the g-file, which there will be very soon. Sometimes you can meet f5 with knight e5, but I think here, my reaction Taking with the g-pawn and then pushing is even more appropriate. Let's just start the engine just to see. Computer actually likes knight e5 a bit, but it's probably going to say this is all right, too. Says white should play c4 to at least have some influence on the center. Okay, I think he played knight c3. I go b5. Yeah, might as well play b5. I mean, if you have the choice between b5 and b6 in a Sicilian, usually b5 is the way to go. Um... Everything else being equal, of course. The only thing is, like, sometimes your pawn can get overextended. And as I said, they can use a4 as a means to create some initiative on the queen side. Attack your b5 pawn. But here he just doesn't have time to do that. Here, a4. Yeah, and rook g8, and I'm already on him. Yeah. So I think a4 was the last straw. He really had to do something drastically different here. Like, maybe knight e4 right now, before my rook, rook hits the g8 square and try to swap some pieces or something. It still looks pretty tough, even after this. Knight Check. takes, knight takes, and the pressure remains. Guess he might have to take it with bishop instead. Knight takes, bishop takes. Yeah, now I have the bishop pair. No complaints whatsoever. So he played a4, rook g8, knight e4, took. Yeah, so if he took back with his bishop on e7, I was planning on either rook takes g2, or just knight c3. Probably I would have gone for knight c3. It's like a desperado move because we figure we're going to lose the knight anyways. But we're opening up a line towards g2. So let's say he takes. Then I take on g2 with the rook. Queen takes. I mean, if he moves his queen anywhere else, he's going to get hit with a huge discovered attack. So take. Bishop Check. takes. King takes. Taking seven. And if we assess the material, black is up, what, two points of material? But most importantly, my king is nice and snug. His is wide open. He's not going to survive this. That's already minus six. So he instead chose to just part with the piece, but I don't think he ever really got much for it. Yeah, I mean, in a long time control game, like White would probably be resigning pretty soon, but in short time control like this, anything can happen, so it's no wonder he played it out. And I did have to avoid some tactics. Nothing, any, nothing really... Um, too crazy, but you know, I gotta make sure like rook a8 check or the knight d6 resource doesn't bug me. Here I played queen b7, looks okay, just guarding a8. I think king f8 is a good move. It's just for peace of mind purposes, it's nice to not have to worry about knight d6 with the fork on the king and the queen. I did blunder uh, knight takes e5, but as I said, <laughs> this turns out to actually help me because I get to go queen d5 and hit his knight, and if the knight moves, I get to take the pawn on f5. 
I'm just up a piece. Yeah, and Check. this is basically resignable now. Check. Knight g4, and before we could play, knight takes e3, he just resigned. Yeah, I guess bishop takes e3 is also pretty convincing too, isn't it? So, all right, so yeah, if you're playing this line for white, you gotta play f4, um, or sorry, you have to play queen g4 prior to um, doing f4, because you want to make sure that after, let's just back up a little bit, after queen g4, g6, queen e2, so that black doesn't play knight f6 with tempo, that if ever knight f6 is subsequently played, that you can play bishop h6 and disrupt black's castling. Don't want to put that pawn on f4 yet. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this blitz video. I'll be back tomorrow with another one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.